Well, I'll present an analysis of the folksonomy of free sound. First of all, uh, you don't see any Turkish or Indian term in the title, but uh, I will talk about free sound, which is one of the tools that can support the Com Music project. And just for those of you who doesn't know about it, uh, free sound uh, is a project that was started in the MTG seven years ago. It's a collaborative online sound database meaning that people record sounds and upload them to free sound. It's a kind of flicker for sounds. And well, it's becoming quite a, a well-known and, and big site. We have more than 140,000 sounds in there. And now we are starting to have also some com music related sounds. And we expect that in the following month we'll have more. So uh, uh, my PhD is related with uh, free sound, and I'm researching about things that happen in free sound. So I hopefully will be able in the following months to start also working with this com music data as case studies for the research. But for now, uh, I will uh, explain a bit the research I've lately been doing about the folksonomy of, of free sound. And well, this is a, a screenshot of, of the site. So what I will explain, first of all, is just super quick uh, basics of uh, what this collaborative tagging. <clears throat> and uh, then I will show uh, an analysis of the, of the folksonomy. And then I will quickly show some ideas of how can this analysis be useful uh, for improving the descriptions of the sounds in free sound, future, future com music sounds in free sound, and there are some conclusions. So let's start for the uh, first part. Those are the tags that define the first part of the talk. And collaborative tagging is something that's used in many online communities. And basically, uh, it's something that did use for organization of the content and for retrieval. Uh, tagging means to attach labels to online resources. And collaborative means that the users are the ones that do this, do this work. So yeah, th those are just some examples. Like in YouTube, you can find tags to describe videos, free sound for sounds. Uh, well, you, I guess you already know about these sites. So a way to conceptually model or understand these uh, collaborative tagging systems is that we have community of users. We have a set of tags. This set is not predefined, so it's being uh, uh, new tags are being added uh, as long as users create new tags. And these tags are assigned to online resources. So <clears throat> every link that joins uh, one user, one tag, and one resource is often called a tag application or a tag assignment. And the whole, the whole set of, object, of objects, so users, tags, resources, and their relations through these tag applications is often called a folksonomy. So what I did in this research is to, uh, uh, well, that's more or less what I've said, is to analyze this folksonomy that we have in free sound. The data I'm analyzing, it has, well, it's from April 2005 until March 2012, which means seven years of tag applications, which is quite a lot. So we have almost a million of tag applications 6,000 uh, uh, users, and as I said before, 140,000 sounds. And we have 40,000 distinct tags. Here, I would like to clarify that distinct tags means different um, string representations, so to speak. But there might be some tags that have the same meaning or that are just misspellings or things like that. But the system, uh, now it's not intelligent enough to know this, this kind of, uh, so it treats all the tags as if they were different. And well, uh, to have an idea, the average number of tags that we have per sound, well, I'll be talking about sounds or resources, but it means uh, the same. It's of almost seven tags. And just to have an idea of the distribution of the frequencies of occurrence of these tags, so how, uh, how, much, how many times are those tags used, we see, well, this is the complementary cumulative distribution function. And it's a kind of power law uh, distribution, which is often observed in many of these studies in other folksonomies. And basically, what it means is that there are a few tags that are used a lot of times, which are those in this uh, 
uh, bottom left, your left uh, side. And there are a lot of tags which are not, uh, which are rarely used. Those, uh, this is the list of the most uh, used tags. Uh, and well, in general, there, there are always uh, quite general concepts or concepts that can be applied in many different concepts. Um, here then what we, what we looked is the number of tag applications that users perform. And here we see a similar uh, thing as, as before. So there are a few users that don't really tag uh, many sounds. And there are, uh, ah, yeah, the other way around, there are a lot of user, users that doesn't tag a lot, and a few users then, then tag uh, more. And then we looked at the, the correlation between the size of users' vocabulary, that means the number of distinct tags that they have used, and the number of sounds that they have uploaded. And we've seen that there is a positive correlation, meaning that as users are uploading new sounds, they are using new tags to describe them. So this might be because users tend to upload different kinds of sounds. This is just a, an intuition. I mean, we haven't tried to test it uh, scientifically, but that's a general intuition that you see navigating in, in free sound. There are some specific cases of users which are really um, devoted to, I don't know, field recordings or specific sounds, but in general, they tend to, to blow different kinds of sounds. So this could be one of the reasons why uh, this uh, positive correlation is there. So now I will have a look at different uh, specific uh, aspects of that folksonomy. And first, uh, I will see how the vocabulary and the whole vocabulary of the folksonomy has been increasing. And uh, well, this is the evolution of new tags that are introduced every month since 2005 until now. And we see that there is a slightly growing tendency, and especially in September 2011, there is a high um, raise. And this is due to the software upgrade that we released in September. We call it FreeSound 2. And that was a major change in the site. And well, uh, it became a bit more popular. And now we have more users. And, and you can see clearly this effect on, the, for example, the number of, of new tags per month. Here we have a look at the, this same number, but in a cumulative. So we keep on adding the total number of tags. And we plot also the number of users. These are users that upload sounds and tag. We have a lot of users that are registered and do not upload. They just download other sounds. So these are only the ones that contribute to that folksonomy. And then we computed the correlation, and it's almost uh, perfect. So this means that uh, new users that are being registered are using new tags that didn't uh, exist before. And this suggests that there is not really a reuse across users of the tags of the folksonomy. They tag in an isolated uh, fashion meaning that they are not getting very much influenced between them in which concepts to use to describe sounds. Uh, well, yeah, we see again the, the change. So then to have more insight in this aspect, we looked uh, at the tag reuse. We started computing a very uh, 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 simple uh, metric which is uh, just taking the percentage of uh, tag applications that involve previously used tags. So those tags that are being used more than one time. And we see that 95% of these applications involve this kind of tags. So this somehow suggests that there is some kind of reuse. But that we'll see what happens. Then uh, we took another measure, which is the average number of users that, have, that use each tag. So that means that if r uh, equals 1, means that each tag is only used by one user, so there is no reuse at all. And then the, the upper bounder would be the total number of, of users. And we see that there is uh, 4.84, so it's quite low. Well, although it's higher than what it has been observed in other folksonomies, it's quite low considering that there are uh, uh, a lot of users and, and a lot of tags, uh, meaning that well, they are not really uh, sharing it, it tags between them. So then what we looked is if they actually, uh, users reuse tags from their personal vocabularies. So we computed the average uh, number of tags that users reuse, but only from their personal vocabulary. 
And then uh, we've seen that it's uh, 11.41. So if we compare it with the average size of the, the user's vocabulary, which is almost uh, 30, it's uh, one third more or less of this. So probably users, uh, if they reuse at some point, is from their vocabulary and not from the others, which also uh, fits with that idea that they don't really uh, get influenced between each other. So then what happens if, from one side, uh, we see that there doesn't seem to be really a, a reuse, and the size of the vocabulary, it's not, uh, it's keep on um, growing, so there is no stabilization. But at the same time, 95% uh, of the application involve already used tags. Well, the, the answer um, is in the tag distribution that I showed before, and well, this is more or less the same uh, idea. So there are only a few tags that are used a lot, but those uh, are, um, are involved in the vast majority of applications. So those account for a lot of these applications, and this percentage of reuse is high because of only these tags. And this could be interpreted as that these tags are those that are used for uh, general des uh, descriptions of the sounds. So at the general level, uh, users tend to agree on which tags to use which makes kind of sense. But then, when it goes to describing the details of the sounds, everyone uses their own uh, sort of vocabulary. And then there is this uh, long tail of uh, rarely used tags. And well, that's uh, understandable, because uh, the interface of uh, the tagging interface in FreeSound doesn't really reinforce any kind of uh, reuse or um, collaboration, because we don't show uh, which tags have been used by other users or this kind of stuff. So yeah, that might be something that 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 could be changed. And yeah. So then uh, another thing we we have looked at is the semantic classification of the tags in FreeSound. So here the idea is well following methodology from from other uh, articles. Um, we try to classify the tags in FreeSound according to their semantic uh, function or utility, I don't know how to call it. And this means to see which tags are referred to the content of the sound, so which tags are used to describe things that happen in the sound, for example, to tell which instruments are in a recording, or uh, to tell uh, what sources that appear. Then tags that are referring to the context, so where the sound was recorded, or the action that was happening at that time, or what devices uh, were used. Then subjective tags, meaning that there's, those are only users' opinions, and that maybe someone else could uh, use another tag and, and have a different uh, way of describing it. And then organizational tags, and those are those tags that are used uh, for personal organization of users. So for example, if you have a sound that uh, you think it's interesting and, and you, for some project that you have, and you put a tag of the name of this project just for you. No? And well, basically, the way of, classifica um, of classifica classifying these tags, uh, well, this is the figure from that paper where I draw the, the methodology, is that uh, you try to map every tag to an external knowledge base. In this case, we are using knowledge base called Yago. And it's basically a mixture of Wikipedia and WordNet. So uh, you try to find a match between your tag and one of the concepts in this knowledge base. And then in this knowledge base, uh, all the concepts are assigned a category. And those categories are arranged hierarchically. So once you, you have a point in this hierarchy, you can go up to the root category, which in all cases would be entity. So when you are getting closer to these root categories, you have a finite set of possibilities. And then from these possibilities, you uh, classify them from those that refer to the content or the context. So that's how does it work, the, the methodology. And if you don't find any mapping to this external knowledge base, then you go to the, the other way, down. And then what you do is to apply some natural language processing to map also these tags to either subjective or uh, organizational categories. So just uh, as an example, if you don't find any mapping and you see that the tag is an adjective, then you will probably uh, map them to the subjective category. 
So uh, this is the total number of tags that have been categorized in, in every category. Uh, I have to say that this is not uh, excluding. So more than one category could be assigned to one tag. That's why the, the total number doesn't sum up the uh, 40,000 that I mentioned before. <clears throat> and I also listed some of the most uh, some examples of the tags that are classified in, in each category. And what we see is that the most well, there are a lot of tags that couldn't be classified, but from those who couldn't, most of them are in the content side or context. And this is somehow good because it means that those are tags that are useful for any user. So are not uh, personal opinions of the sounds or, or organization things, but uh, something that describes the sound itself. Although uh, this classification method has a lot of errors and we should uh, try to make it uh, better because, well, if you look at the examples, there are some things that, that really uh, doesn't, doesn't match. And then another observation that we can see here is that uh, if we have a look at those tags that couldn't be uh, classified, we see that some of them are because, for example, Grabaciones de Campo, it's in Spanish, so it's normal that the system couldn't map it to the knowledge base. There are some uh, typos. But for example, there are other tags like the first one, which is a microphone uh, model, which is a very domain-specific knowledge. So this general knowledge by base doesn't understand it. So yeah, that suggests that we need some kind of uh, ontology or thing that can uh, understand these uh, specific concepts. And yeah. So another thing we tried is uh, to derive clusters from, the, from all the tags and try to organize them in semantically similar uh, categories. So here uh, we used two methods, which I'm not going to explain how do they work, but I have some slides, so if someone later wants to, to comment on that. Which basically uh, representing the folksonomy as a graph, meaning that nodes in this graph are tags, and then the relations between these nodes are similarity measures between tags. And these similarity measures are based in co-occurrence in sound. So if there are two tags that always appear together in all the sounds, that means that they are quite similar or they are semantically related. Well, that's the, the hypothesis that we use. And, and then we use two different um, clustering detection uh, techniques. And the reason that we use two different is because one is kind of a standard modularity optimization technique which basically partitions the graph in n groups. And then there is another method that uh, also allows, partitions the, the graph, but also allows overlapping in nodes. So one tag could be part of different communities. And that's very interesting because a typical studies doesn't uh, use uh, still these, these methods. So just some um, quick uh, uh, numbers. With a modularity technique, we got almost uh, 60 clusters with 120 tags per cluster in average. And we uh, observed that uh, the clusters that arise are good to differentiate between uh, gener in general types of sounds. So for example, those tags that refer to, to music and those tags that refer to field recordings, so at the very general level. And then using the other method, which allows overlapping, that's why you see that there are a bigger number of communities and the same, well, even a big number of average tags per community because it allows overlapping. In this case, we've seen that, for example, all the big communities that arise are more or less the same because they have the same nodes, but the small communities that are created are maybe groups of more uh, of related tags which are much more specific than the ones we could observe in the first method. So just to show some examples, well, and yeah, we need to improve that. Those are the, some, the 20 most uh, used tags from the biggest communities of the first method. And here what we see, for example, uh, wow. all these communities more or less contain tags that refer to field recordings or that could be used for outdoor recordings, this kind of stuff. Then, for example, we can see that those two communities could refer to more musical uh, sounds. Well, just to see that they are 
I use it for general categories. And this is with the other method. So these are uh, smaller communities. And here, for example, we can see that this is clearly uh, tags related to, to guitars, but very specific in this, in this aspect. We see that this is referred to keyboards, well, organs and, and Wurlitzer and this kind of pianos. We see this, for example, is a very uh, specific case. I think that's mostly for maybe probably one single user that has tagged a lot of sounds with these concepts because it's really, really uh, specific. But finding sounds. And yeah, we have uh, something of com music which is uh, starting to arise. So that means that we are starting to have an impact on free sound. And yeah. So from, uh, from this analysis, um, my current uh, work in the PhD is um, in building a tag recommendation system. So when users upload sounds, I can recommend which tags to use and try to improve the, those descriptions and the, the vocabulary of the folksonomy. So with this analysis, uh, I think one idea, one idea is to categorize these tags. And here I will just quickly explain. Uh, I used some of the metrics which I uh, analyzed before. Well, some of them I didn't explain for uh, time constraints. But, and then uh, in the last part, which is the, the, the most interesting, for example, from these general communities which I attach uh, a name, like the field recordings, the musical, uh, I can use these communities to look at the tag and see to which of these communities it's closer and then try to assign a general level. So for example, I could see that tag guitar is referred to music. Sitar, for example, is referred to miscellaneous because it didn't get a, a good uh, match. But this uh, should improve, and it's one of the things that should clearly be improved. And well, just to, to, to have an example, I can use this, uh, these metrics to characterize a tag. And then I could also use these metrics to know which tags to recommend or which not. And wow, this is slow. Yeah, so so some conclusions. Uh, well, the folksonomy of free sound is really uh, growing continuously, and there is no sign of it stopping. So that's not good. <laughs> One of the possible reasons for that is that uh, there is always new kinds of content that's being uploaded and requires of new tags to describe it. But this would be the, I don't think that's the real explanation. <laughs> This would be the optimum one. So the real explanation, I guess, is that uh, the interface doesn't promote this tag sharing. So users are not really used to that. They are not getting influence between them. So there is no agreement on how to describe the sounds. And this makes things really complicated then for retrieval and for organization. But this is good for me, because then I can research about that. So well, yeah, noisy, that's said. And uh, then uh, in that, that last part of the semantic classification and the clustering, what I try to do could be called as extracting structured information from the folksonomy. And what I've seen is that's kind of complicated because it's really, really, really noisy. So that makes me think, think that I need some uh, specific domain specific knowledge in order to better understand this folksonomy. So for example, as I was telling that I was mapping the tags to this uh, Iago external ontology, but th this is too general for that case. It doesn't really work. So I need more specific uh, things. And in the context of, co of com music, it could be a really good uh, case study for defining a specific ontology that links all these concepts that you are all talking about these days and then trying to see how do these concepts map on the sounds of com music that are uploaded to free sound and try to see if that makes sense. And yeah, and this will be useful for the tag recommendation system. So here you have some references and that's all. <laughs>